guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a scroll sawed skull. Well, what we're going to make today, as I said in the intro, is a skull on the scroll saw. And while I was on vacation, I found this guy uh, whose name is Alex Fox, and I just happened to fluke on it by Google searching and goofing around one night when I was bored. And I found this guy who makes these really cool scroll saw patterns. So I contacted him and, you know, basically has an Etsy shop and I purchased his pattern. And what I wanted to do, because I really like this pattern so much, is I want to show you guys how to make it and point you to where you could get this pattern if you wanted to, because it really is a pretty cool pattern. So let's just start off by showing you uh, what it is that I purchased off of Alex. So as I said, I ordered this pattern from this fella, Alex um, Fox, online on his, from his Etsy channel. And it's basically a PDF file that includes, it's a six page PDF file, which includes all the patterns for all the pieces that you'll need to put this together, as well as uh, instructions on the back as far as how to put it together. Now, it's, it's kind of a cool pattern and it's really well done. And what we need is basically two pieces of each of these parts. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mill out our stock. Well, if we look at the pattern, the recommended thickness is three millimeters. Uh, now, I'm one of these guys that prefers to work in Imperial, so for those of you guys that want to work in Imperial, that's one-eighth of an inch thick. So the first thing that we're going to do is I have this piece of maple here. We're going to take it over to the jointer. You can see I've already started the process. We're going to flatten off the one side and make one adjacent edge 90 degrees and flat. And we're going to do a little bit of resaw at the bandsaw. Well, we have all of our stock build now and you want to go through and look for imperfections in the stock because we're going to be laying patterns down on this and you don't want really bad obvious imperfections in your pieces. You want them to have a nice flat surface so that everything mates together. And when you should find a flaw, what you want to do, like there's one right here, don't even be pretty about it. Put some lines through that. There's a gouge that Mr. Thickness Planer decided that he wanted. So mark it and be bold about it so that you don't get these pieces in or these bad sections in the pieces of your project. It's now time to trim our pattern pieces only because we don't want to deal with these large unruly sheets of paper. You would rather have smaller pieces. Now we're going to keep them together in groups. We're not going to separate each pieces. We want them to be able to um, hold together while we're spraying them. The problem is if you cut them in smaller pieces, as soon as you try to spray it, the spray force blows it away and then you have a problem. So separate these into manageable pieces. These full sheets, as long as you have the width of your stock can stay intact. What I am going to do is trim up the edges so that I can have a nice clear view of the edge of the board so that I'm not having a piece that's accidentally overhanging and that way I can dry fit and test to make sure all the patterns are going to fit on the stock that I have. If they don't fit I'm just going to separate them right down the middle and put them on separate pieces of stock. 
Well, my pieces of stock are seven and a half inches wide by 14 inches long, and that seems to be perfect to be able to do one whole sheet of the pattern. So I'm going to take one piece at a time. I'm not gonna mess around with multiple pieces. It's too much to deal with. I'm gonna do one sheet at a time, give that a good spray of spray adhesive on the back side of this, let it tack up for three minutes, and then we're gonna rub it down onto our stock. Now just carefully lay your pattern in place. You've already done a dry fit, so you know that it's gonna fit in the area that you've allotted for it. And you just give it a little bit of a rub down here to make sure that everything adheres. All right, once you get this one done, well, don't just sit there and get lazy on me. You've got a bunch more to do. So attach all the rest of your patterns to your 1 8 inch thick stock. Well, you have all of these patterns now attached to your stock and where do you go from here? Where do you start? Well, each one of these pieces has a square hole in the middle and that's to assist you with the alignment and the assembly of the final piece. So where would I start? I'm one of these guys that likes to start with the interior cuts. So let's go through every piece. We're going to pick out our interior cuts and drill our blade entry hole in each one of those. For this thickness of stock, we're going to be using a number two reverse tooth blade, and I'm gonna put a brand new blade in here just to give me the um, optimal cutting that I want. You don't want to start off with a dull blade. Start it off with a fresh one, guys. Blades are cheap. So as well on the preparation, we're just going to round off the back of this blade. And by doing that with a fine sharpening stone, as you can see me doing here, it uh, provides a lot more control by rounding off that back edge. So now that you have that done, you wanna do all of your interior cuts. And I don't know what to tell you here other than take your time, you're not in a hurry, and uh, cut out all of these interior cuts on each one of the sheets. Now once you're done those interior cuts, just take your time and cut out each one of these um, shapes that are on the pattern. Well, truth be told, there are 58 pieces in this project to cut and it's really nothing special as far as how to do it. I've shown you there the interior cuts and now you, the exterior cuts, but I'm surely not going to bore you to death by letting you watch me cut 57 more pieces. So guys, cut all your pieces and once you get them cut, I'll see you over at the bench.
with all 58 pieces cut, you now want to remove the patterns from each piece. Now, you have a choice here. You can before you remove the pattern, you can transfer the number of each piece onto the back, onto the wood with a small pencil mark or something like that, just so you know what piece you've got. Or you can use copies of the pattern and lay the pieces out on that. Whatever you choose is fine, as long as you know which piece is which. For the removal of the patterns, I'm going to be using a heat gun for the initial removal of the paper and then uh, just straight up mineral spirits with a piece of paper towel to wipe off any of the glue residue that's left on the wood once the pattern's removed. Once you get all the glue residue cleaned off, you can give them a very light sanding. But I'm going to warn you of something. Consider this my tip. If you're using mineral spirits like I am right here to take away that glue residue, make sure that you wait until the uh, mineral spirits have completely evaporated from the piece. If you don't, you will be left with a lot of extra cleanup as the mineral spirits and the sawdust mix together to form this really nasty little wood dust paste that goes in every little crack and crevice. So just my advice to you, let it dry overnight. No rush here, guys. Let it dry and then sand it tomorrow. Well, you're pretty much sitting around now waiting for those mineral spirits to dry up. You may want to check the pieces periodically just to see. You'll be able to feel if there's tacky areas where the residue wasn't completely cleared off. It's better to get it as you go than try to get it the next day after you've waited for the mineral spirits to dry up and then you have to wait again. Anyway, there is one more thing that we can do while we're waiting before the final assembly and that would be to cut the shaft or the piece that we need to go through all those square holes. Now this uh, particular pattern, that hole was drawn to be one eighth of an inch by one eighth of an inch. You may want to check yours. I ended up actually cutting mine a little oversized and I cut it oversized on every single one consistently. It must have just been the groove I was in. So I've cut one that's a little larger than one eighth by one eighth just to make it fit nicely in those holes to help with alignment. So that's one other thing that you can do. Cut that center shaft out of maple or whatever material you're making it for to help or with to help you with the assembly. Well, it's the next day and we need to sand up all of these pieces and they're not that bad due to that reverse tooth blade. It's reduced a lot of the burring on the back side, but we're not going to go crazy on the sanding. Just a piece of sandpaper, mount it to a piece of three quarter inch MDF and we're just going to take a couple passes just like that on each piece just to remove all those excessive burrs that may, may or may not be there. So give it a couple passes, clean up the burrs on each piece and then we're going to get into the assembly of it. I've laid all of my pieces out on an extra copy of the pattern just so that I know what piece is what. There are five different components that you need to assemble for this particular project and they lay it all out very carefully as to how to, how to assemble these four and those are the ones that we're going to start on first. The other component is the main body of the skull and we'll get to that once we get these four components. So let's look a little closer at this. So for these smaller components, they've pretty much taken away the guesswork and what they've, how they've done that 
is they've made these assembly drawings to be exact size. So if you're wondering about the layout of the piece or how it fits together, all you need to do is line it up on these assembly drawings. So it's, it's actually pretty much foolproof here. So all we're going to do is go around and get all of our pieces. We're going to line them up on our drawings and then we're going to glue them all together. And there are the pieces put together for the first section. Um, I did say there was five different sections, but each one of these ones is made up of two different pieces. It, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at the instructions. They're well laid out. So those are those pieces done. And all I did was hold one in place and then get a bird's eye view looking down to make sure that everything was aligned according to his little diagram. And then just a little drop of glue. I'm just using regular wood glue. But of course, if you wanted to use CA or something that's a little quicker setting, you could do that as well. I prefer the wood glue because it gives me a little extra time to uh, put pieces together and to play around with them. So I'm going to assemble the rest of the sections for this and then we'll come back and start assembling the main body of the project. Well, I have all of these smaller sections put together and they're drying now. We're going to leave those alone for a while and as I said, move on to the main body. Now the instructions show how to build the main body of the skull by it shows it in halves basically. It gives you the instructions as to the layout for one half and it is assumed that you duplicate it on the opposite side. So it has a numbered system which starts off 15-1, 14-1, 13, etc. And that's the way it's assembled. You start off with the pieces that are 15-1 and you put them onto your wooden dowel that you cut. And then from there, you want to take your 14 one pieces and place them on the dowel as well. One on each side. Now we're kind of sandwiching it here to, uh, to get the full skull. So I'm just going to do a dry fit here with this and make sure that everything is pulling together the way that it should. And when I'm happy with the dry fit, then I'm going to start gluing it together. Now, I don't think you need a video of me sliding pieces on and gluing them bit by bit. So I'm just going to do this off camera or maybe I'll do it in a fast motion and we'll go from there. Well, at this point in time, now we are done all of the pieces that need to be skewered over that um, that square dowel that we made here. And we're just going to take a flush cut saw and we're going to very carefully trim that off on both sides of our skull. And then we're going to make sure that we sand it flush to make sure that it's completely flat, that there is absolutely nothing left sticking out. And then we can glue on the last two pieces of our skull, which in this case are number one, where we end up with. And once you're happy with how flush they are, just glue on your last pieces of the skull. Now, do you remember I said that there were several sections here that get glued together and we glued up all of the small pieces? Well, in the pieces that are labeled as number three, these will be the pieces for the jaw or the teeth. And those can all get glued together to form the jawline. So you just want to line them up so that they form the jaw and in this case, it'll be the pieces that are marked as 15-3. Those will be the ones that go together in the middle. And then you will glue them into the jawline. 
as well as gluing together the sections for the number three piece on the instructions, we're going to want to glue together the sections for the number two piece as well, so that they are forming, well, what it'll form the nose cavity and the teeth at the front of the skull. Now the pieces that make up your number two section that you glued together earlier, they are going to get glued into place here in what would be the nasal cavity. And we're just going to put a little extra glue on here. It's a little overkill. We're going to get a lot of squeeze out, but I want to make sure that I get plenty in there coating it when it goes into place. So we're just going to place it in there just like that. And once we're happy with where it is, we're just going to give it a little bit of a clamp in there. But at the same time now, we're going to mount our lower piece, which forms number three. And we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to coat it with glue and clamp it in place so that we can form the lower section of the jaw as well. just like that. And now we'll just put a couple clamps in place to hold it there and clean up the squeeze out. And that will be the uh, nose cavity and the lower jaw portion or the chin. Now the pieces that form section one, they will get glued in just below the cheekbones and they will be the pieces that finish off your jawline. So I'm just doing a little dry fit here. Everything looks good. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue and we'll get this glued into place. You want to be sure that with every glue up here that you're taking away the squeeze out. It just makes for a cleaner build all around. Just like that. So glue both of those sections in place, one on the left and one on the right, to finish off your jawline. Now the last pieces that form the group number four, they will get glued very carefully onto the cheekbones here. One right here by the eye socket, just like that and then that will get glued together with this piece over here. Just like that. So glue both of those in, clean up your squeeze out as you go, and that is the cheekbone assembly. And that, my friends, would be all she wrote for the assembly of the maple scrolled skull. And there you have it, a scrolled skull. Guys, I don't know what to say. Uh, kudos to Alex Fox for making this pattern. This pattern is really cool and it has levels of challenge from all levels of ability, let's say. So if you're a beginner, you're gonna find this challenging, but that's okay, it's all right to get in there and scroll around the teeth of each piece that challenge is not out of your grasp. I think that you could do it. Um, if you're an experienced scroller, there are more challenges here as well. It's quite a finicky piece when it comes to assembling that front jawline with those front teeth, but it is nothing that is frustrating or, or undoable. It's nothing crazy. In fact, it's very doable and it is an excellent pattern. Um, Guys, I didn't get paid to do this show in any way, shape, or form. Um, I just, it's a pattern that I like that I ended up purchasing, and I'm so, um, I don't know what it is, but I really like this skull. I just think it's completely awesome, and I think the pattern is brilliant. I may even blow it up to double the size 
and double the thickness of my material and see how that goes to make a bigger skull for a decoration. Maybe make it out of MDF and spray paint it. That might be my, my way to go next time. But I really like this maple one. It's just awesome. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me this week. I hope you've enjoyed the project. I'll put all the links below to get the pattern if you're interested. It is reasonably priced. And uh, guys, I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.